Hello again. Nice to have you back in Noir Alley. I'm your host, Eddie Muller. Today I've got a film to satisfy the noir purists. It's Johnny O'Clock, made at Columbia Pictures in 1947. Dick Powell and Evelyn Keyes are the headliners, and the swell supporting cast includes Lee J. Cobb, Ellen Drew, Nina Fosh, and Thomas Gomez. I've seen this movie half a dozen times, but I couldn't explain the plot on a bet. Either there's too much of it or none at all. Either way, it's nearly impossible to keep track of what's going on, although that's no obstacle to one's enjoyment. I've seen it six times. What keeps me coming back is the film's ultra-stylish depiction of the noir demi-monde, a fabulous artificial world of ritzy casinos, grungy precinct houses, all-night diners, apartments sumptuous and seedy, all coexisting in a generic two-block stretch of backlot city streets. The plot is only an excuse for spending 96 knock-around minutes in the noir netherworld. The depiction of that world is so iconic, it sometimes feels as though you're watching a self-aware parody made 50 years later. Writer-director Robert Rawson's approach to hard-boiled material is so smart, the movie plays a bit like deconstructivist pastiche, even though it was made three years before Hollywood's noir wave crested. Applying Raymond Chandler's dictum that a good plot is an excuse for a series of exciting scenes, Rawson pours his attention into creating vivid vignettes rather than making them add up to a coherent whole. He gives generous bits of business to an expansive cast, from the main actors down to juicy scenes for veteran bit players like Mabel Page and John Burks. Even young Jeff Chandler shows up, tossing off a wisecrack in his first speaking role. What was that? Somebody's got a nasty cough. Throughout, Rawson shows a nifty knack for cracking wise in the Chandler style. I, I, I choked on a piece of scotch. <laughs> no offense to star Dick Powell, but the character of Johnny O'Clock is the kind of role Cary Grant was born to play. In fact, he did play it in 1943's Mr. Lucky, written by Milton Holmes, who wrote the story upon which Johnny O'Clock is based. Alan Ladd played the part as well, only under the name Salty O'Rourke, a 1944 picture also written by Holmes. All three are sardonic and sartorially splendid ne'er-do-well gamblers, hedonistic bachelors who fall for a good woman at the fade-out. Yet it was Powell who adopted this suave and sarcastic persona as a mainstay in his career, eventually adapting the character to television as casino operator Willie Dante in the Four Star Playhouse series. Powell's nonchalance with a wisecrack is nonpareil. He is long overdue for reassessment as one of the defining actors in film noir. Now, brightening all the inky darkness is Evelyn Keyes, who is never more beautiful than she is through the lens of director of photography Burnett Guffey. She's positively luminous, and her prolonged seduction scene with Dick Powell is about as sexy as the production code allowed in 1946. The way she purrs, you play rough, sounds more like an invitation than an admonishment. But Keyes dreaded making this film as she had recently divorced director Charles Vidor after a short, passionate, and sometimes violent marriage. In fact, the backstory of Johnny O'Clock has just as much, if not more, intrigue than the film itself. Rawson only got the chance to direct this, his first feature, because Vidor rejected it as beneath him. I'm sure the tension with Keyes had something to do with it. Vidor brought a lawsuit against Columbia chief Harry Cohn, claiming the studio boss singled him out for demeaning treatment. The suit became the talk of Hollywood, especially when both men took the stand to give graphic, expletive-filled testimony. Vidor took particular exception to Cohn calling him that Hungarian coke sipper. Cohn shrewdly retaliated by providing witnesses to testify that he called everyone a coke sipper. The Hungarian wasn't meant to be demeaning, just a way of distinguishing between all the coke sippers on the Columbia lot. Not like he called him a hunky 
Coke sipper. The case against Cohn was thrown out. Now, I've told that story before, and I love it so much, I'm sure I'll tell it a dozen more times. So, settle in for a full dose of high noir style. Here is director Robert Rawson's first feature film from 1947, Johnny O'Clock. 